thank you very much, Ben. So yeah, everybody knows the British Museum, but who knows the Keltenwelt am Blauberg? I think not so many of you have ever heard of this museum. Um, and so I want to introduce you to the museum and uh, to a small uh, special exhibition we uh, have launched there this year. Um, also, I think about quite the same topic like you did, but uh, I think on a completely different terrain because it was in Germany. And in Germany, we don't have this debate like uh, the uh, scientific community in uh, Great Britain or on the British Isles has about, um, yeah, would we like to question our common opinion how, how the Celts or, or this Celt tribe moved uh, and, and what they were doing. So uh, it was quite risky for me as a scientist to do this. <laughs> but um, yeah, let's have a look at how we did it and uh, what people say to it. Um, first of all, I want to, wanted to tell you a little bit about my background. Um, as uh, Phil already told, um, my PhD was on museums and I did quite a similar thing on German museums 10 years ago. Um, and I also had some kind of form in which I visited um, 122 museums and I did also uh, 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 literature and online research on uh, another 250 museums. So I covered a large part of the um, German archaeological museums landscape in my survey that I did for my um, uh, um, PhD. So uh, you can see here um, the uh, map where I mapped, um, I think, I hope you can see all the dots um, of the museum that present archaeology because I didn't only use uh, or employ the um, archaeological uh, museums but also of course many museums like small heritage museums who present a little bit of archaeology. I also tried to include those. Um, um, there's a bit of statistic of what I was doing, how to um, uh, separate different themes of the museum were displaying. Oh, that's <coughs> wrong. How did I get that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, this is what I was doing. I uh, also tried to, to, to have a look at the displays and, um, uh, yeah, um, somehow uh, categorize them and see what the difference of the different uh, of the various museum uh, was um, and what I was also doing was how uh, or one of my larger topics was how archaeology was presented in these museums because mostly we, sh we show the nice um, exhibits uh, the nice object but uh, a lot of museums don't talk about how archaeology is working so this was one of my topics and what I also wanted to explore uh, or uh, more, more intensively to explore was um, how do we engage with the present times and these are just two examples from the Hamburg Museum above and uh, the museum at Nebra where this um, Bronze Age disc was found. Um, there's a, a very nice museum as well and they try to engage uh, present times with uh, the use of waste, uh, the, the left um, picture in above, uh, the right picture above is modern waste and uh, compared to, to ancient waste and also um, uh, the, the other museum is very much engaged with looting because the, um, the disc was found by looters and had to be retrieved from the antique market uh, very spectacularly. So like this. Um, yeah, this is what I'm normally doing. I'm a landscape archaeologist, so it's completely different, but I'm engaged in um, yeah, uh, British Isles archaeology and also in Iron Age archaeology in Germany, and so I'm quite familiar with the uh, debate and what's going on. Um, and of course, um, there's not only big, large exhibitions in uh, uh, Great Britain, there's also a lot of Celtic exhibitions in um, Germany, um, like for example the big exhibition in Stuttgart and there was also a larger exhibition uh, in uh, Völklinger Hütte, that's somewhere in the west of Germany, and uh, both exhibitions raised about um, 
200,000 visitors each. So it's some different um, yeah, thing than we do at the Cadmium Palace. So of course, uh, Julia always um, told, and I think some of our slides are quite similar, there's a lot of literature, we know everything about the Celts, and people, the public can read everything, and uh, all the things we want them to read, and also the things we don't want them to read, like for example, the Celts and discoveries, and their discovery in the Middle Earth, or something like that, so, um, yeah. And there's also, of course, this large community of modern Celts, um, who uh, yeah, find their um, identification by being cast, especially in um, the United States and in Canada. And um, I have this quote, I, I like it quite a lot, that there are, um, um, yeah, I just read it, I, it's not that important at the moment. So, and of course, all these modern recreations, and it's not only happening, um, the one is, uh, image is familiar of the Celtic languages, but it's also happening in um, Germany. I wonder if this is, oh yeah, this is a pointer. Because in Germany and all, uh, all the German-speaking countries of um, uh, Austria and Germany and Switzerland, they have got uh, uh, um, a society that is called Keltenwelten, and this is all museums that deal mainly with Celtic um, archaeology or objects. So, um, and of course, the Celtic world at the Gladbach is part of this Celtic Belton, Celtic worlds. And um, so, we are also um, uh, yeah, in some kind of, or they are quite uh, in some kind of, of network um, about uh, yeah, displaying Celts for the public. So, this is finally the Celtic world at the Gladbach, and you see it's a quite <coughs> modern museum, and it's based, um, you can see it here, it's based. Um, a uh, tiny bit, uh, 40 kilometers uh, northeast of Frankfurt, so it's quite central in Germany, but of course it's remote. You have, even from Frankfurt, you have to drive about an hour there, and um, yeah, it's just in the landscape, and it's at the side, but um, of course, wait a second, I'm going to show this one first. Of course, it's, it has got this spectacular <coughs> finds, like the, um, the statue, the sandstone statue of this. Uh, uh, man that was found in the vicinity of one of two uh, big burial mounds, and in these two burial mounds were three um, three burials uh, with a lot of really really fantastic finds. And people go there just because of these spectacular things. And the very unique things at the Kelvinburg, it's all original. They don't have the uh, copies. Uh, but uh, they, um, yeah, they argued, uh, the community there argued a lot with um, the state of Hess, where they are in, and, and they finally um, were allowed to present everything at the place. And that's quite unique, and it's really a fantastic museum. Go there if you're in Germany. And of course, being in the countryside is different than being in a big city, and they have to do a lot of commercials, and um, I try to, I, I love this. Uh, bag for bread, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I hope uh, you get the notion. Uh, if the, the um, yeah, if the, the cats from the Glauber would have had the bread from this special bakery, they would be still alive. Of <laughs> so, and of course, they also do a lot of promotion in other ways, and you can already see that it's not always helping the case of being a bit uh, more critical to what we display. Because, of course, uh, equalizing um, what we find in, in the state of German state of past with um, the, the goats in, in France is, is a complicated thing. So um, this is the entrance to our um, exhibition uh, that, that we launched in the Celtic world. And, um, uh, yeah, there is no reason actually for these uh, for this museum to present an exhibition in this direction, but they wanted to because uh, visitors were asking them a lot of questions. For example, things like, um, why don't you display things from Ireland? We call Ireland other Celts, and in Ireland other Celts, and how does this connect? And all these things. So um, the, the guides in the museum were quite annoyed and wanted an exhibition about this. 
And then I thought, okay, this is my hour, this is my time, and I can put all my things into this exhibition as well. And uh, so we did. And um, yeah, of course, we did uh, have uh, not as much room as the British Museum. We were uh, limited to 100 uh, square meters. So it's <laughs> like, yeah, one floor in a normal one, uh, one family house or something. And um, uh, we had to reduce everything, and of course the budget was much lower, and um, so we could not borrow fancy things from anywhere. But fortunately we had the uh, Römisch Germanisches Zentralmuseum in Mainz uh, um, at our uh, display, and they have got copies of everything. Of all the fancy finds of the world, they make copies, and very, very good copies. You couldn't tell uh, the original from the copies in most cases. So, um, yeah, what we were doing, the middle part was mainly about um, things that uh, are, um, uh, how, how do I say, it? Uh, uh, connected to, to the rebirth of the Celtic notion from the 17th century, as Julia already referred to. We had a lot of historicizing imagery in there to, to, to make displays. And of course, we had all these beautiful finds, the, the talk of Trichting. Uh, I think most of the things were displayed at your place as <laughs> well. <So. laughs> the helmet from the Gris. And uh, we didn't do much about uh, the archaeological explanations, like what the designs are on the things. We just displayed them and uh, showed them yeah, to, to um, people. Um, and uh, the, the, the outer space of, of the, um, the, the walls were covered with uh, these kind of, of uh, flags. Um, and uh, we divided them in four parts and they got all different colors so that people would know different things start there. And um, we started with the uh, um, uh, ancient sources and what the historians say about that. And of course, in Germany, we have few the monks who, who had quite concrete ideas about what the Celts were, and that they were, would never have been able to build a nation that because they were only into war and into esprit and things like that. So that was quite interesting. The designers reduced me to a very, very limited um, space of, of text. And that was a really good thing, because uh, in the evaluation, you will see that this was still too long. But um, yeah, the, the next part was about uh, the, um, the, the languages. And uh, since I was uh, studying Celtic studies, I had a good idea. So I could also capture uh, this area as well. And we covered the archaeogenetics and the and in, uh, of course, the archaeology got a, a larger space, and we were concentrating mainly on um, what archaeologists' uh, opinions of Celts are. And what we mostly wanted to display is um, what archaeologists do nowadays, that they are not so much interested in the nationality of people or anything, but they want to, um, to study uh, <coughs> things in their local surrounding in their environment first. So that's what we were doing with the uh, things. And of course, in the end, there was a larger part of uh, the modern cast because that's also something that interested the people very much. And then there was, of course, um, at the, uh, at the um, uh, things we displayed, there was were always a, a, a short notion that there would be uh, more explanation in our media station. So we had two media displays where people could explore very deeply into different topics. And uh, we were astonished that a lot of people really do. Oh, oh, I think I'm in the wrong presentation, actually. OK, I don't have time anyway. We, I wanted to tell you that we, were, um, that we also did a small evaluation. We, um, Evaluated uh, 100 and, uh, 137 um, uh, visitors um, and asked them about their opinion. And um, I will skip all the part of the um, uh, of, of the formal things and come mainly to what they think. They thought our texts were much too long, or still much too long, or at least 
30% of them thought they were too long. And um, they also thought um, that we were, um, that uh, the, um, the objects were choice, chosen quite well, and that also the topic was very interesting to them. And in the end, I think that's a crucial thing, is uh, we asked them um, uh, two questions which they could uh, choose what they learned from the exhibition. Of course, we wanted to be very short and didn't want to um, disturb people too long with this um, survey. And we asked them, um, I think it was something, I have written it on the, on the, dis uh, on, on the slides, something like uh, Celts were uh, people uh, or uh, yeah, a, an ethnic group um, that well, covered large parts of Europe was one of the things, and they uh, and they uh, nowadays present uh, still present in uh, the western parts of Europe. And the other thing was um, that we said um, we don't know what cats are, but because uh, different um, um, disciplines have got different opinion on what they are, and check. 75% really checked the second box, so um, at least this goal was achieved with the exhibition. And um, it got a lot of um, media in press and social media. And of course, there was a large uh, uh, framework program about it where we um, destroyed all our nice things. We taught people because we had a Celtic folk band and all these <laughs> things. So everything was, was right. and. Um, the, the main thing that uh, I learned except from how to present this topic to people um, uh, in, a, in a way that they can understand uh, what we are talking about is that it also helped a lot of people who are working at the museum because they now have a, a much better notion on what they are telling and um, uh, they uh, really are in, in a brainstorming uh, before the exhibition. We really talk about everything and every misconception they had themselves because, of course, the guys, they are not archaeologists or anything. And so we could really work out a, a lot of for the museum itself. And parts of this exhibition, oh, okay, we got a lot of um, um, requests for um, uh, the exhibition to. to um, go on trends, yes. <laughs> and um, it, uh, parts of the ex exhibition will also go into the new exhibition at the Cloud. That's it. Sorry for the slide.